Tim Laird here with you with Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs, and today we found a gem. Welcome to the Holly Hill Inn, where the food they make comes largely from nearby Kentucky farms. Kentucky has beautiful potatoes. And oftentimes, right out of the Holly Hill Inn's own garden. I love it, it's a stress buster. You come out here on a Saturday night, you know, about five o'clock, pick my herbs, you look around you, you can't beat it. It's, it's what being a chef in Kentucky's all about. From squash blossoms to tomatoes. These are all our uh, varieties of tomatoes. Chef Weta Michael uses it all. Not only is there a lot of great food here at the Holly Hill Inn, but there's a lot of Kentucky history. It was opened in 1979 as the Holly Hill Inn. Before that, it was a home to the Parrish Rouse family, and it was called Hermosa. The building itself has been here more than 100 years. Back then, the garden behind the house was full of flowers, which still show up today. And you can still see the remnants of that garden that come up. The daffodils come up in perfect straight lines. The tulips come up in perfect straight lines in the spring. The front of the house looks the same too. And they built the front porch on the Holly Hill Inn out of concrete, so all of that concrete is 100 years old, 108 years old, and it was all put there in order for the grandchildren to be able to roller skate. We're really just off I-64 here, but it's way off the beaten path. It's hard to find food anywhere prepared with this much passion. She's so original and she uses everything local. That's right, Kentucky proud. The chefs at Holly Hill are always coming up with new ways to enjoy food grown right here at home. Everything has been wonderful because everything is so fresh and uh, I think that's because it's locally grown. Even the fresh fish is Kentucky proud, like this striped bass. Largemouth bass and we serve it quite often in the Holly Hill Inn. Today, it's served with rustic sautéed vegetables. And we're going to do it with a Spanish-style sauce verde, which means a green sauce. The fish is cut into thin strips and lightly dusted with seasoned flour. That's the secret to making sure it gets nice and crispy. So whenever you have a, a fish that you're cooking with the skin, you want the skin to be nice and crispy. So we're going to put these in our skillet here, our old cast iron skillet. We left the skin on, but we did scale this fish, and um, that's I love. That's one of my favorite ways to serve it. I absolutely love cooking in cast iron. And I know everybody at home, you you, you guys have those uh, cast iron pans. Get them out, use them because they're well seasoned, they're flavored, and uh, they'll last forever. The original nonstick skillet. And I'm just going to add our vegetables to this second cast iron skillet here. We have purple haze carrots that we've just braised in the oven with a little bit of lemon, some sugar, uh, some fresh herbs. We have local organic raised fennel, so we slow cook it with fresh thyme, with lemon, um, with a little bit of chicken stock. Same with the carrots. They've also boiled several varieties of local potatoes that come from Richard Jones at Happy Jack's Farm. He really loves his potatoes, and he does, what, 18 to 20 different varieties. This is a raw Belle Rouge, which you can see is red throughout. Kentucky has beautiful potatoes. And there's a purple, and there's about four different varieties here. These have been just simply boiled. We'll bring them together in the pan a little bit, serve them under the fish, and put the sauce on the top. Oh, wow. That okay. sounds great. So what we have in here, Tim, this is a fish velouté. And what we've made is a fish broth. And we've thickened it with just a little bit of roux. And that just means a little flour and butter, and there's some okay. onion and garlic in there. We're going to heat it up. And to make that sauce, we're going to go into the blender with um, some fresh herbs. Need to go high. You want that nice green, green, green. The potatoes and vegetables go down on the plate first, then the fish. And you can see when you do have a crispy skin, it keeps the, the fish nice and straight. It's not wilting down over it. And then you have this beautiful green sauce topping. Everything on that plate was raised within a 30-mile radius of this restaurant. Wow. Tim, you need to taste this. Thank you, Weena. I was hoping <laughs> you'd say that. I, I want to test for sure, just to make sure it's done right. Get a little bit of the sauce, the fish. Oh, absolutely fantastic. I mean, it's Great. done right. I love the uh, texture of the sauce and the crispness okay. of that fish. I, I lo really love that. 
If you want more information on the Holly Hill Inn or any other restaurant featured on the Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs, log on to newlocaltv.com. Next on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs, from the garden to the glass. It's organic sour cherry juice okay. with simple syrup and orange juice. Get the secrets to a homegrown cocktail at the Holly Hill Inn, known as the Woodford Siesta. Wow, yes. that is right. absolutely delicious. Plus, local berries and peaches make for this one sweet dessert. Just sweet. More secrets of bluegrass chefs right after this.